I'm on a train facing backwards, feeling slightly queasy and heading at speed towards Cheshire, where I've been invited to the home of an England legend for afternoon tiffin. Uh, we've arrived at our location in Leafy Cheshire. Uh, sadly, our guest hasn't bothered to come and meet us, which possibly suggests he doesn't even want us here. He is expecting. It's time for plan B. I think I'll take my coat off and climb over the gate. Liverpool in the FA Cup on Saturday, you're going to go back to Anfield. Uh, how do you feel about that? Oh, wonderful. Uh, who would have thought at 37 going back to play? Um, at the club where I enjoyed so much success um, and you know we won a lot of trophies and that's where I won most of my trophies so I'm grateful for them and the fans were want wonderful for me. Uh, you had a huge success with playing with Michael Owen at Liverpool. Why did those particular dynamics work do you think? Me, mine and Michael started from a young age. We played together. He was 16, I was 18 playing for England in the 18th um, and then we started playing together there and that's where Gerald Houllier saw us. Uh, he was the manager of the French under 18s at the time. So, and then obviously I went to, he brought me at Liverpool. Right. And then just escalated from there and we'd work on stuff, you know. Um, and and it, just, it just clicked like that and it was just a great, uh, you know, every, every time, any, any time I was going up for the ball, any time I knew where he was going to be, he knew where I was going to be, it just worked. Have you, have you ever played with someone where there just isn't that sort of chemistry? Or yeah, he played with loads of people <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> you try and make it work, but you, you inevitably it's you know it's not quite clicking. But you still try and make it work. But that, that me and Michael had this little thing going that it just straight off it just worked. At what point in your life, Emil, did you realise God, I'm pretty good at this football, Eric. I can make a living out of it. Um, when you say living, or make it make it my job, you know. I knew I was pretty good from a young age, but making a job out of it probably 16, 17. Yeah. As late as that, but making, um, but I knew I was good, for, good, at, good at it from the, when I first started. It probably would have been nine, eight, nine. But I, I did athletics, so and then till I, till they put a ball in front of me, I used to love athletics more. Throughout your career, you, you've got stick for not scoring enough goals, and Jared Hulier always stuck up for you. Um, but fans, some fans, got on your back saying you, you weren't prolific enough in front of goal. Do you, did you find that criticism harsh, or no, do you really. think it was fair? No, not really. Look, I, I was on the pitch to do a job, and I did that job. Even though scoring was part of that, I did score, but not as much as what everyone wanted to, wanted me to. But I still was on the pitch for a job. Yeah, but did it bother you? This did it bother me? Um, only, only in the early, early years of my career, and I still, I'm still playing. Yeah. <laughs> so if anyone's wrong. Yeah. Who's wrong? When you were in Australia, we, we were all very amused over here when we, we got reports of Heskey Cam, <laughs> which um, <laughs> was basically a camera following only you around. So it was like that, that movie with Zidane, um, yes, the yes, Mogwai yes, 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 soundtrack. Yes, yes. What, what did you make of that? <laughs> First for me, to be honest with you, but... Um, so when you're on the Heskey cam, I presume you were aware of it, so does that make you really self-conscious, you know, it's like, oh, I can't pick my nose, I can't no, spit, no, I can't you know what? scratch I, I, myself. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about it one bit, to be okay, honest, because right. you're, just, you're just running around, and I'm only thinking back now when, you, when, you say, <laughs> when you're saying that, what, what was I actually doing? So, um, <laughs> no, thanks. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Obviously, get, getting towards the end of your career, have you... Plans for after football? Yes. I haven't actually. Um, everyone keeps telling me to take my badges, do this, do that. I haven't really thought about it. If I was, to, if I was to do coaching, it would probably be uh, younger kids rather than okay than adults, because um, you can actually they do what they're told. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Can I have, have you any regrets? I haven't. None. No. Uh, only possibly, you know, like, it wouldn't be a regret. It was I was injured in the cup final. We played Leicester played against Spurs, and we lost it one 0 I think it was. But I was injured. But I could that could have been prevented if I'd have, if I'd have, um, figured out what I was wrong. I just had a muscle imbalance at the time. I was injecting my back, and I was doing all sorts just to get um, to get back on the field. But if I'd have known what was wrong, I could have just prevented that, and I, I believe we would have won that. Right, okay, so that, that's after, what, nearly 20 year yeah. career, that's, that's the sum total of your regrets, that's, that's uh, a nice thing to be able to say. 
Number three, Stoke City. This is the magic of the FA Cup.